If you think about the psychology of Instagram for a minute, um, like, what is it about? Like, I want like a billion followers and I'm gonna follow like 10 people, right? Because that shows how awesome I am, right? I'm amazing. So what would it look, what it, if, if there was Instagram in the first century, what would Jesus' Instagram account look like? Like during, you know, he probably had a lot of, he would have had a lot of followers until he turned out to be a schmuck, like not the, the leader that everyone wanted him to be. And then right. it went, unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. Like, it went down to like zero, you know, overnight. Hey guys, in this edition of Hashtags, I wanted to share with you an interview that I did just a couple weeks ago with Corey D'Angelo during our Men's Summer Breakfast series. Uh, there are just some really cool things that came out of it that I'm excited to share with you. Specifically, we talked about how as men, we can become so obsessed about leadership and leadership development that we forget that we're first called to be followers, first and foremost, followers of Christ. And if you're interested in our next installment of the Summer Breakfast Series, it'll be next Friday, July 12th. I'll include a link in this post so you can register for that or see, the de see more details about it. So I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, let's keep living empowered by the light. Um, talk a little bit about this idea of servantship. Yeah, so that's Lance's... I, I don't know if he coined the term. I think he probably did. Um, but yeah, you mentioned earlier, like if you go on Amazon and search <clears throat> books on leadership, there's like 600,000 of them or something like that. And you type in servantship or servanthood, and there's like 200. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know. <clears throat> but really, what, what Lance is getting at, and I'll read the, I'm going to read the scripture because it, it's impacted me like significantly. He, 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 he starts out, I mean, the, the passage, some of you, have, I'm sure many of you, most of you have read this, but where a few of the disciples are arguing about, like their mother actually goes to Jesus and he says, I want my sons to sit at your right hand. And, and Jesus kind of rebukes her and says like, I don't think you know what you're asking. And so he turns the, to the disciples and he says this, he's, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And then I'll, I'll, I'll read one more. So Matthew 23. But you're not called to be you, you are not to be called rabbi, quote unquote, for you have only one master and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I, I think what, what, what I learned from Lance and, and just studying scripture is Jesus doesn't really talk about leadership. What? He doesn't. He, that, he rarely, if ever. I, I really have struggled. I mean, okay, maybe shepherd, you know, uh, but that's different. Well, I don't know if we'll get into that. But, but um, let me let me throw something but, out just to as because yeah. maybe some of we're we're thinking this. We're that. Wait a second. Didn't he model leadership for us? He Ooh. modeled servantship. Okay, so. So listen, like this is hard to get. It's it, it could be semantics, but it it's it's really important for me uh, to retrain my mind on this. Um, we we live in a culture that's obsessed with leadership. It's obsessed with it, guys. I mean, like I have all these books in my office, you know, about leadership, and we talk about it, we read them, I mean, and and there's not like there's a lot of good knowledge there. However, we have to realize that it's it's not what Jesus taught. And a lot of times we're bring, we're looking outside of Scripture and bringing things into <clears throat> who we are as as believers that isn't really what Jesus taught. What I've been charged with, and what I'll pass on to you guys, you can hate me for it. It's just to um, to think about that. And like Jesus said, you know, whoever wants to be the greatest must be a servant of all. And, and He came to serve, not to be served. And and um, there's a lot more that he says on that topic. 
But if you go through scripture, he talks about this all the time. Blessed are the meek. Uh, you know, his own behavior. He was a follower. Jesus was a follower. And I think that <clears throat> I, would, I, would, I would say that what, she, what we're called to be as men and women and is uh, <clears throat> our, our followers more than leaders. Um, but that's not popular. Um, Lance <laughs> tells a story. He's like, think about it. When you do a job interview and, you, and you're recapping how the interview went, you, you, what do you, what do you, if this person's kind of a follower, they're not really a leader. Like, it's looked at as a negative, right? Like, who wants to be known as a follower in our culture, in our day and age? But um, Jesus was looking for followers. He was a follower himself. I mean, he said, I, I, I wrote this down too. He said, by myself, I can do nothing. And, and I judge only as I hear. My judgment is just for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. I do not speak on my own accord, but the Father sent me. I, but what my Father who sent me commanded me to say. So it's interesting because when you look at Jesus, what he modeled, yes, he formed a, a team of guys and they changed the world. And that, that's often where we talk about what Jesus' leadership ability but what we forget, and I've been reminded as, as we've been going through here at Orchard Hill, the, uh, in going through the book of John, how I'm, it, what's sticking out to me more than ever as we work through the, the book of John is yeah. how Jesus was hated. Yeah. Like, it, it's funny. We can look back and say, man, what a great leader, and how is he doing all these incredible things, and we need to be like Jesus. Well, if we're going to be like Jesus, that means that People are going to hate us, they're going to abandon us, and we're, we're going to have to potentially be the sacrificial lamb? That Because that's because then Jesus says, I'm calling you to follow me. Yeah. Right? So we are, he, does, he says, you're followers, you need to follow me. Just like as I follow my father, you need to follow me. And he, told, he tells his disciples, the apostles, over and over again, look, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to be butchered. Yeah. Uh, you're coming with me. Join me in this. We're gonna all get butchered together. I mean, where do you see that in leadership? Kind of, I'm kind just. I'm I don't just, think it said that exactly. No, yeah. it's probably. Not. <laughs> but I mean, it's a paraphrase. It's like the Mike Hatch, <laughs> the Mike Hatch Living right. Bible. <laughs> so okay, I was thinking about like what's another real world example to to kind of show maybe show like what I'm talking about how our, our culture is obsessed with leadership, and I thought about Instagram. What's Instagram all about? Followers. Yeah, man. Right? Like, I, my worth, and Chris, please don't take it. Chris is, like, big on Instagram, in case you didn't know. It's <laughs> awesome. Because, like, and, and I love, I love it. I, I, I love Instagram. I love checking out what people are doing and stuff like that. So this isn't a slam on, on, uh, on that. But, but if you think about the psychology of Instagram for a minute, um, like, what is it about? Like, I want like a billion followers and I'm gonna follow like 10 people, right? Because that shows how awesome I am, right? I'm amazing. So what would it look, what it, if, if there was Instagram in the first century, what would Jesus' Instagram count look like? Like during, you know, he probably had a lot of, he would have had a lot of followers until he turned out to be a schmuck, like not the, the leader that everyone wanted him to be. And then right. it went unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. Like, it went down to like zero, you know, overnight. Um, but he would, Jesus would have probably followed everyone, right? I mean, he, he was interested in everyone, so he would have had way more follow. I don't know. I'm probably taking this too far, but <laughs> but um, it's just it, it's it's just thinking about what what our culture is like and how it's kind of insidiously um, kind of getting into our mind. And my wife spoke on Wednesday and really convicted me about compromise talking about the church and Pergamum and stuff and like well, how, what are these little things that we don't even realize that are getting into our minds like psychologically and, and changing the way we think and I think that could be one of them I mean I really do I think it is one of them like this um, the, the whole obsession with leadership and me having followers people need to follow me you know instead of me being focused on who am I following and in that being the basis for how I serve other other people.